When we were attending religious classes or catechism, the teachers and catechists, if you recall, would teach us by asking, who is God? We would learn from heart that God is the creator of heaven and earth. Then we deepened our knowledge of God by learning also his attributes. In the readings of today, we are presented with the episode of the prophet Elijah in the first reading, who experienced God in a different context. Elijah's experience of God recalls the way Moses related to God in the Old Testament. The lives of Moses and Elijah ran parallel to each other. Just as Moses ran away from the palace of Pharaoh for fear of death, so also Elijah ran from the persecution and the fear of death at the hands of Jezebel and her cohorts for having vanquished the false prophets of Baal. They sought refuge in the mountain. Just like Moses, who was exasperated with leading the people of God through the desert and drove him to ask God to take his life, so Elijah, in today's reading, is seen as one who is frightened, exhausted, dispirited, and asks God to take his life. Having seen how the Israelites turned unfaithful to God, overcome by depression, he prayed for an immediate death. Here is where God manifests himself to Elijah as a tender and loving mother in the face of his grumbling complaint, just like a child. A quiet touch from the angel awakened the prophet. The angel whispered, get up and eat. There what he said was a hearth cake and a jug of water. Elijah did eat and drink, then settled right back to sleep again. The angel whispered tenderly, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. Elijah did and recovered his strength. We witness here a genuine mother's care, giving food to the discouraged child. Do we not see ourselves in this picture? How often and how many times were we overcome with fear, with despair sometimes, with discouragement, with anger, with feeling we are alone trying to survive, perhaps feeling that our prayers are not being answered. But just as Elijah received the tender care of God as the one, the mother, who loves, and even more than a mother, so God is to us. Can a mother forget a baby at her breast? And on the child she born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. The responsorial psalm we just recited and sung, Psalm 33, expresses God's kindness and goodness towards his children. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors, he set me free. Elijah found in the mountain of Horeb, or Sinai, the mountain points to the place where God meets man. Elijah found refuge in that mountain. We just celebrated a few days ago the transfiguration of Christ. There again, this event took place 
in the mountain of Tabor, where God spoke and the three disciples heard, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. It is in finding God in the midst of troubles, uncertainties, loss, that we find God. In fact, God is always present. He waits patiently. We have to come to Him since many times we are unable to approach Him knowing that He's there. It is God who approaches man. This is what the Gospel tells us today. God offers us nourishment not simple bread or water to satisfy our hunger or quench our thirst, but something greater, something that lasts not longer, but forever. In fact, the words of Christ in the gospel, we find that he is the bread that gives life forever. Forever and everlasting, belongs to God alone. But then he made it possible that we also share in this limitless time of being with God. Christ says, I tell you solemnly, everybody who believes has eternal life. Christ offers nourishment, but this time, the provisions are for a very long journey. Indeed, the journey to eternal life. This is something that Christ, that his listeners, in fact, in the gospel, could not comprehend, much less accept. Even his own, the inhabitants of the same town or village, they just could not understand the words of Christ. In fact, they started to ridicule him with the, his offer of the miraculous bread that gives them eternal life. They know his parents, so they think he's just one local silly boy who starts to dream aloud. I am the bread of life. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that man may eat it and not die. Christ, at this point, declares himself as that bread. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread I give is my flesh for the life of the world. At this point, we also feel that it is hard to comprehend Jesus as the living bread, even if we believe. But leaving aside for a moment how to reconcile the living bread with Christ, let us see and discover in this discourse that Christ makes the deliberate kindness of God that he shows to his people, feeding them, giving them drink, pursuing them again and again, as we have seen in the Old Testament with the people of God, in order to offer the greatest gift of God, God's sacrificial love for us, just like the way he manifested himself to Elijah. God follows us quietly, gently, and very attentively. God gives himself fully because he loves totally, despite the fact that we have become or what we may have been. Now, how do we respond to this unqualified giving of God in Christ, who entered our own humanity so that we not only will feel him, but we may live with him, or better, that he may live full in us, in the words of St. Paul. How is this possible? This is what St. Paul 
tells us in the second reading in today's liturgy. Since we have been touched, enveloped by this life-giving love of God in Christ, we have to live in the words of St. Paul, avoiding to grieve the Holy Spirit of God who lives in us from the very first moment when we receive the sacrament of baptism. We have belonged to God. We have begotten out of love and not the slaves any longer, the slaves of sin. We have received the seal of freedom. What does this mean? It means that we have to live as God's children. It is not simply a question of imitating Christ. It goes further. St. Paul tells us to imitate God as children of His that He loves. How do we make this unique gift in us a reality? St. Paul says, Never have grudges against others or lose temper or raise your voice to anybody or call each other names or allow any sort of spitefulness. Be friends with one another. Be kind and forgiving each other as readily as God forgave you in Christ. God's love is really His gift of forgiveness and mercy towards us in a way that it would appear as if nothing has ever happened, notwithstanding our failures and infidelities towards Him. As the Hebrew people, with all their grumbling and failures, reached the promised land, as God promised to give them, so too with us, because Christ has given Himself in our place as St. Paul explains, as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Sacrifice meaning Christ has sanctified us by His love through His death. We are free. This is the sense of the opening lines of the second reading. We have been marked by the Holy Spirit of God with His seal to be set free. Pope Francis finds in every occasion a way to express this truth and reality of God. A father who loves, who loves unreservedly, fully one without wanting or exacting something in return, just like the father in the parable of the prodigal son. He only sees in us what is good in each one as he intended it from the beginning of creation, when he saw that what he had made was not only good, but was very good. Let us live in anticipation of the Jubilee of Mercy, which Pope Francis has declared starting December 8 of this year. The special event in the church brings us to the core of our Christian faith. Love, yes, love which shines bright and purely in forgiveness and mercy. The very gift God gave us in Christ, who truly offered himself as a fragrant offering acceptable to God, that all of us may shine like him as God's children. Let us go back to Elijah. He was fed so that he could make a rather long journey to meet God. He will walk to God and from there go down to continue his mission among his people. After the transfiguration, Christ and his disciples descend from the mountain to continue the mission among the people. So too we, who have been blessed with God's presence in us, must now go into the world and live the life of true imitators of God, the God of love, keeping in mind that the Christian life is nothing, nothing less 
than laying down one's life in the service of others in the manner of Jesus' service with towel and basin. May the Blessed Mother, the first disciple of Christ, sustain us with her loving intercession so that, like her example, we may faithfully follow in the footsteps of Christ as God's true sons and daughters. Amen.